Similar to the liquids, gases, slurries, and other substances they measure, use of flow meters and other flow-related instruments seems to be fluctuating in numbers deployed, types implemented, and even in the skill levels needed to install and maintain them. For instance, while different amounts of flow meters are being purchased, more new types are being used, which may make it harder to implement some of them. Of course, it's never long before most process engineers gain the knowledge they need to deploy new flow instruments and implement them in the new settings where they're needed. Hi, I'm Jim Montague, Executive Editor of Control Magazine and ControlGlobal.com, and this is another Control Market Intelligence Report from the Process Automation Media Network. The topic for this report is flow instrumentation. This report is sponsored by Anderson Hauser, which is the largest manufacturer of field sensors in the world. Visit www.endris.com for information about products and applications. We distributed the survey on which this market intelligence report is based this past September and collected more than 100 responses. The following are the most significant results we collected. First of all, it appears that the overall number of flow meters being bought or specified is shifting from users implementing 10 to 50 per year to those deploying either less than 10 or more than 50. For example, 42% of respondents this year reported buying or specifying less than 10 flow meters, but only 34.8% did so in 2009. Those installing 10 to 30 and 31 to 50 flow meters both declined slightly. However, respondents using more than 50 flow meters increased to 18.8% this year from 14% in 2009. The other big news this year was that the most popular types of flow meters shifted significantly from two years ago, especially in favor of Coriolis flow meters. Of course, differential pressure flow meters remained at the top of the heap. 84% of respondents say they use them most often this year, while 75% said so in 2009. However, Coriolis took over second place this year with 79%, while electromagnetic flow meters took third with 75%. In 2009, their positions were reversed, with electromagnetic at 59% and Coriolis at 57%. Likewise, while orifice plate meters took fourth place both years, Vortex shedding meters moved up to fifth place this year from sixth in 2009, basically flip-flopping with turbine meters, which dropped to sixth place. The rest of the top ten this year were thermal dispersion, insertion, positive displacement, and venturi tube and ultrasonic Doppler, which tied for tenth place. Perhaps because of these shifts in the types of flow meters applied, it also appears to be getting more difficult to implement some of them. For example, while 64% of this year's respondents said applying flow meters was easy, 67% said it was easy two years ago. However, while 25% reported this year that it was hard to apply flow meters, only 17% said it was hard in 2009. Still, despite this apparently increased difficulty of application, more respondents this year report that they have the know-how to implement flow meters. For instance, this year, 57% said their knowledge of how to apply flow meters is good, while 24% say their knowledge is excellent. In 2009, only 48% said their knowledge was good, and only 22% said their knowledge was excellent. Likewise, this year, only 16% said their knowledge was fair, and only 1.9% said their knowledge was poor. These were declines from 2009, when 23% said their knowledge was fair, and 2% said their knowledge was poor. One remarkably consistent result showed up when the respondents were asked how they carried out flow meter projects. This year and in 2009, both groups of respondents reported that the top three methods were using standard devices we've always used, work up the application from first principles using Reynolds numbers, etc., and finally, calling their favorite trusted vendor and doing what that vendor said to do. Similarly, when asked why they use their flow meters that they do most regularly, respondents this year and in 2009 both added that they fit our application better than others, or I understand them and how they work better than others, and finally, company engineering policy says to use them whenever we can. However, 
While the types of responses were consistent, those reporting that their regular flow meters better fit their application jumped to 57% this year from 48% in 2009. But those simply following engineering policy dropped to 6.7% this year from 11.3% in 2009. Finally, almost three quarters of this year's respondents and those in 2009 said they're happy with the flow meter technology they can choose from, but just over 20% in both years add they wished there were better flow meters that they could buy. Just 4% this year said they were not happy with available flow meter technologies, but only 1% in 2009 said they were unhappy with the available flow meter technologies. This has been another Control Market Intelligence Report from the Process Automation Media Network. I'm Jim Montague. Thanks for watching.